For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Review states UK's PREVENT program is discriminatory. Evo Morales warns of DEA-led destabilization in Bolivia. Australia detaining migrants for average of 689 days, says report. An Egyptian political prisoner launches hunger strike. We begin with a report that has pointed out that the UK's counterterrorism program, PREVENT, has amounted to an abuse of children's rights. These findings are part of the People's Review of PREVENT released on February 15th. The report is based on around 600 testimonies gathered between 2014 and 21. It states that PREVENT is ineffective, disproportionate and discriminatory in its impact on Muslim communities. The strategy was launched in 2005 and solely targeted Muslim people. Its stated aim was to support people vulnerable to radicalization and stop them from becoming terrorists. The strategy was expanded to all forms of extremism in 2011 and in 2015, the government introduced prevent duty. This was a year after the so-called Trojan hose affair, which was later proved to be a hoax. Prevent was expanded into schools and childcare centers with public sector workers mandated to report people they suspected of extremism. The People's Review argues that this placed children in an extraordinary net of surveillance. It cites examples of children being interviewed by counterterrorism police without a parent's presence. The report also obtained a list of priority areas for the PREVENT program. It found that 73% of Muslims in England and Wales were living in these areas. UN expert Professor Finolani Olain has highlighted concerns of de facto criminalization and the negative impact on the rights of Muslims. In the year March 2021, PREVENT received 4,915 referrals. While Muslims make up only 5% of the population, 22% of these referrals were related to Islamism. 969 referrals were children under the age of 15. Nearly 1,400 were young people between 15 and 20. Bolivia's former president, Evo Morales, has warned of destabilization attempts by the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. He has accused the agency of propagating hate and lies against the coca growers movement and its leaders. Morales added that the plan was following the same recipe and used by the U.S. to justify coups and invasions. The U.S. recently offered $5 million for information related to Maximiliano Davila. He has been accused of smuggling cocaine into the U.S. and possession of weapons. Davila was the head of Bolivia's special forces against drug trafficking under Morales. The former president has also accused the U.S. of spying on and targeting leaders of the six federations of Tropico of Cochabamba. Morales expelled the DEA from Bolivia in 2008, rejecting the U.S. imposed war on drugs. The agency's purported actions against coca cultivators had led to violent repressions in Chapare and Yungas region. Interior Minister Eduardo del Castillo has said that over 30 coca growers were killed and over 560 were injured under the DEA. Under Morales, the country adopted a community-based approach in its anti-trafficking response. Minister Castillo has said that the Arce administration has been able to carry out more effective operations and seizures. He added that any attempt by the DEA to enter Bolivia with its repressive policies was disqualified. We now go to Egypt, where a political prisoner has gone on hunger strike against systematic medical negligence. Walid Shoki has been imprisoned since October 2018 after being accused of being part of a terrorist organization. A dentist by profession, he was part of a Egypt's April 6th movement. Formed in 2006, the movement was led by secular and progressive youth in support of workers. The organization was banned after the 2013 coup for supposedly indulging in espionage. As Shoki completed the maximum period of pre-trial detention, a 
officials refused to release him and impose new charges. He was accused of participating in protests in 2020, despite being in jail at the time. Shauki is among the over 60,000 political prisoners believed to be held in Egyptian jails. Authorities have been repeatedly accused of rights violations, including deliberate medical negligence. Among recent reported cases, it is that of 42-year-old Ahmed Shaheen, who died last week. According to Middle East Eye, at least 49 people died in prison in Egypt in 2021. Six deaths were recorded in December alone. Serious concerns have been raised about the health of other imprisoned activists, including Ala Abdel Fateh. And for our final story, Australia is holding people in immigration detention for an average of 689 days at a time. 32 refugees and asylum seekers have been indefinitely detained at the Park Hotel in Melbourne. Human Rights Watch has urged the government to end this harsh and unlawful policy of arbitrary detention. It argues that Australia has used immigrant detention as a form of deterrence. This goes against international human rights law. According to official figures, 1,459 people are being detained at various facilities in the country. They include over 70 people who were transferred from Nauru or Papua New Guinea to seek medical treatment. Migrants and refugees are being held under heavy security with limited freedom of movement. The average detention period of nearly two years is highest on record. 117 people have spent more than five years in detention, out of which eight have been in custody for over a decade. Human Rights Watch has submitted its report to the Joint Standing Committee on Migration. The panel is considering a bill to end indefinite and arbitrary immigration detention in Australia. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.